So I admit, I really want to be wrong about Arya and Sansa. In Game of Thrones recently, they've been just completely off the map in terms of this Winterfell subplot. And I talked about that in my last podcast. I talked about how, how Arya and Sansa are acting. Well, especially Arya is just completely out of character. I kind of went into some detail about why the things that were going on with Littlefinger and them just didn't really make sense. And so today I want to kind of look at that from the other angle. What if this is just an elaborate scheme to sort of beat Littlefinger at his own game? And there is some evidence of this. There are some hints. And either uh, either we're reading too much into those hints and it, and just hoping that this is what's going on, or these are actually pretty clever hints. Um, so let's go over a few of these. I'm going to build off of this Reddit post. And uh, this is a Reddit post by Science Motherfucker uh, on the Game of Thrones Reddit. It's, it's a post that's called Why Arya Doesn't Suck. Well, it's actually called The Game of Faces, Why Arya Doesn't Suck. Okay, so there are several bullet points. Uh, the first is foreshadowing. We have quotes from as far back as season six suggesting that Arya will protect Sansa. No one can protect me. Sansa, season six, episode nine. You need better guards. Arya to Sansa, season seven, episode four. Protecting each other is the second bullet point. After Littlefinger suggests Sansa use Brienne to intervene in the Sansa-Arya catfight, Sansa sends Brienne away and says that she has trusted guards here already. Sansa is not afraid of Arya nor Littlefinger, and she doesn't want the honorable Brienne involved in her lying in their lying and schemes. That's an interesting point. I I'm a little less certain that that's why she sends Brienne away. It, following this theory, maybe she is sending Brienne away simply because she doesn't need Brienne. Because she, if 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 her and Arya are actually working together here, maybe she just feels confident that Arya can protect her from Littlefinger. Uh, and she, this is another way to just sort of throw him off the scent. Um, bullet point three, Arya is trained in stealth. Arya was trained by assassins. She is far too stealthy to let Littlefinger know that he is being followed unless she did this deliberately. In season seven, episode four, Arya walks onto Brienne and Pod sparring just as Brienne says, don't go where your enemy leads you. In season seven, episode six, the director deliberately shows us Sansa opening and closing a very squeaky door as she goes into Arya's bedchamber, yet Arya is able to sneak up on Sansa without a single noise. So, yeah, Arya is stealthy. Um, it does seem a little odd that Littlefinger would be able to to notice everything, but then again, Littlefinger is very stealthy. Uh, I, I mean, just because Arya was trained by assassins doesn't mean that she's more stealthy and more clever than Littlefinger. He's been playing this game a long time. But it's a good point still. Uh, staged fights. This one, I think, is this is where the, this starts to get more convincing for me. Uh, here it is. When Arya confronts Sansa about the Northern Lords talking badly about Jon in Season 7, Episode 5, the door is wide open. Similarly, when Arya confronts Sansa about the letter from Season 1, Arya projects her voice just as she is reading the letter. It's almost as if they want someone to hear their fights. I like that point, because it's true, the doors are open, and I hadn't really noticed that. Uh, so it's very possible that they are counting, or at least that Arya is counting on Littlefinger spying on them or having his spies spy on them. Um, what, what I find a little less... I, I can see this being a plot on Arya's part, but Sansa seems truly, truly baffled. Arya seems to be acting out of character, which, which could very well be because she is working this little scheme against Littlefinger. But Sansa, I don't, I, I just don't feel like she's in on it. I think this is only Arya if this is actually happening. And it would explain why she's being so bloody stupid. Uh, so I'm liking this, I'm liking this more and more, but I'm also just still not sure what the point of playing Littlefinger like this would be. I guess just to expose him to Sansa, maybe. Um, since if Arya just takes out Littlefinger, it will be... You know, that would be a crime and whatnot. Um, okay, point number five is the Game of Faces. Now, you remember the Game of Faces is from uh, when Arya was, was training with the Waif and the Faceless Men, and they had to tell lies, but, you know, it was it was a game. They, they had to tell lies that, that others believed to be true or they lost. So um, here's, here's the quote from the Reddit post. 
In what seems to be the most psychotic Arya scene, Arya basically threatens to cut off Sansa's face and pretend to be her. The entire scene is Arya playing the game of faces, presenting lies as truths. She even says that they are playing. She plays this game when she tells Sansa that she remembers Sansa standing on Ned's execution stage. Sansa fought and screamed, and Arya knows this. Arya played the game when she told Sansa she would never serve the Lannisters. Arya served as Tywin's cupbearer. Arya tells Sansa she wonders what it would be like to wear her face in her pretty dresses to be Lady of Winterf- Winterfell. We are beaten over the head since season one that Arya has never wanted any of these things. Arya is playing the game of faces, and when she realizes Sansa hasn't caught on to her lies, she hands her Littlefinger's dagger, symbolically saying, I trust you, and want you to protect yourself from Littlefinger's lies. This is a great argument. I, I really, really like this. It's true, all the things that Arya says are lies. And and initially watching this scene, all I could think is, wow, they're really writing her character poorly. They are really treating her like like she would never say these things or act this way. But if she's playing the game of faces, telling lies as if they were true, that's pretty damn clever, actually. Let's listen to that scene real quick. Back in Bravos, before I got my first face, there was a game I used to play. The game of faces. It's simple. I ask you a question about yourself, and you try to make lies sound like the truth. If you fool me, you win. If I catch a lie, you lose. Let's play. I don't want to play. How do you feel about John being king? Is there someone else you think should rule the North instead of him? Those faces. What are they? You want to do the asking? Are you sure? The game of faces didn't turn out so well for the last person who asked me questions. Tell me what they are. We both wanted to be other people when we were younger. You wanted to be a queen. To sit next to a handsome young king on the Iron Throne. I wanted to be a knight. To pick up a sword like father and go off to battle. Neither of us got to be that other person, did we? The world doesn't just let girls decide what they're going to be. But I can now. With the faces, I can choose. I can become someone else. Speak in their voice. Live in their skin. I could even become you. I wonder what it would feel like to wear those pretty dresses. To be the Lady of Winterfell. All I'd need to find out is your face. So that's, you know, pretty dark and ominous stuff from Arya. And, you know, when when we watch that, we think, wow, what's what's wrong with this girl? What happened to the Arya that we knew and loved? But at the same time, if you if you view it through that lens of the game of faces, it does start to make sense. She's telling lies in in such a way that people believe them, including Littlefinger and Sansa. But and on closer inspection, don't make sense for Arya at all given that she has seen Sansa on the on the executioner's stage she has uh no desire to be the lady of winterfell and so forth okay and the final the final bullet point is the third eye do we really think there hasn't been a single off script scene where bran tells them Hey, uh, Littlefinger kind of started the War of the Five Kings by lying about this dagger, betrayed our father, and is essentially the reason our whole family is dead. We hear crows when Littlefinger comes out of the crypts with John, when Arya enters Littlefinger's bedchambers, and again when Littlefinger and Sansa are talking in Season 7, Episode 6. These noises are very deliberate. Now, I hadn't noticed these. I'm not going to lie to you. I had not noticed the crow sounds. But uh, that is interesting. I, 
I, I find it very hard to believe that, that the Stark children have not spoken together in private, in secret at least, uh, off screen. If only because the the show would want us to be surprised by all of this. I, I do think that all of this is desperately heavy-handed. Uh, and part of this is a problem of the show being rushed in season seven. I mean, months must have gone by since Arya's gotten back to Winterfell, just given how long it, it would take for Jon and, and the Magnificent Seven to go beyond the wall, for all these people to move back and forth across the country. She must have been there for quite a while, weeks at least. So during that time, it's almost inconceivable that she wouldn't have had conversations with her, you know, her siblings about Littlefinger or about these things. Uh, this, this is conveyed poorly simply because the show has rushed so much and we just, we don't see this stuff. Um, it's also made a little muddier by the fact that Bran is, uh, not quite himself these days, but I do find it hard to believe that he wouldn't ever say anything, that there would be no communication whatsoever about Littlefinger. So it is very possible that Bran and Arya, and maybe it is just Brandon Arya. Maybe Arya doesn't really trust Sansa and is trying to figure out how much she can trust her. And this is part of how she's doing it. Um, it's, and I'm not still a fan of this whole plot because just to me, it's too heavy handed. But I do like this theory. It, I love the Game of Faces point brought up here. Um, I, and I, I think that the the sound of crows is is very interesting or ravens, I guess it would be. Uh, so so I don't know. What do you think? I, I think it's a I think it's a great theory. It's a better, at least, you know, I've heard this theory before, but this is probably the best I've seen it actually laid out. So, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that this gets wrapped up on, on Sunday because I've had enough, damn it. I've had enough of this Winterfell storyline. I want, I want the Stark kids to be a united front. I mean, you know, John said it, you know, uh, what he said, he said to Sansa, we have so many enemies now, you know? We need to... And they don't really have that many. But they've got big enemies now. And um, we need to snuff out this Peter Baelish and his nonsense once and for all. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. I'm Eric Kane. Have a, a lovely, lovely weekend. <laughs>